welcome back to the channel. My name is Bryony and I am one half of Indecisive Readers. Today I am here to talk about my anticipated reads for the year. It's actually the 29th of January as I say this, so some of them have already come out. I'm also saying the date because I don't know when this is going to go up. It probably should go up straight away, but I've got some videos that I want to go up at the end of the month and then... So yeah, some of the books I talk about will probably have come out by the time this video goes up, so sorry about that. I'm just going to jump straight in and talk about the books I have. There are 14 on my list that come out by the end of June. I do also have one from July but I'm including it because I don't know if I'll do like a second half of the video and if it's anything like this it'll be really late. So yeah I'm just gonna talk about all the ones I have thought of. So enjoy! The first release date is the 6th of February and I have three books to talk about. The first one I'm slightly confused about because I have it here. So the first book I have to talk about is Hearts of a Volume 3 by Alice Oseman. It's the third book in a graphic novel series about Nick and Charlie who are two teen guys falling in love. It's a very cute, fluffy, heartwarming kind of series. I think I may have just been spoiled. Nick is bisexual and Charlie is gay, but there are also lesbian characters and a whole range of identities in here and I just think it's really, really well done and yeah, it just makes me feel warm and fuzzy inside when I read it. I read the first two this month and this wasn't meant to come out, but obviously I'm going to read it this evening. The second book I have to talk about is Diary of a Confused Feminist by Kate Weston. This is a YA, feminist, funny kind of book. I feel like from the description it sounds quite Holly Bourne, but I think it's going to be about a young adult girl who's kind of navigating her life with a lot of feminism involved, but I've heard it's very funny, so just super, super looking forward to that. From the quotes I've seen on t-shirts and mugs and things, it just it looks really great. The third book I have to talk about is A Sprinkle of Sorcery by Michelle Harrison. This is the second book in the Widdershin, Widdershin series. It's the sequel to A Pinch of Magic by Michelle Harrison, which I read at the end of last year. And that book follows three sisters who are under an ancient curse on their family. But at the end, spoiler alert, they break the curse. And so the sequel is following them navigating their life post-curse and also the new struggles they may face. The next book I have to talk about is released on the 11th of February and that's The Mercies by Kieran Millwood Hargrave. This is her first, I think, adult novel and it's about witches and it's set in the past and I assume it's going to be mightily feminist. But I'm excited because witches and the summary sounds really good but I'm kind of excited but also not hugely excited because I really like the sound of the Deathless Girls but when I read it it ended up being a three star read for me. I really enjoyed this setting but I didn't enjoy the romance so I'm hoping if there's a romance in this one it's going to be better. The next book I have is the only book that's released in March on my radar. And that is Only Mostly Devastated by Sophie Gonzalez. This is an LGBT plus retelling of Greece where it's not a guy and a girl that meets, it's a guy and a guy. And when the guy goes off to his new school, the cool, lovely man, man, boy, fella, he met over summer is ignoring him. And I just think that sounds amazing. I want to read more LGBT plus books but also more LGBT plus romances specifically because as I've read those romances in fantasy and stuff but I haven't specifically read many LGBT plus romances. Also every time I think about it I keep getting the song from Greece stuck in my head so obviously I want to put myself through that pain whilst I read the book. The next three on my list are all released in April. The first is the 2nd of April and that is Pretending by Holly Bourne. This is her second adult novel 
and if it's anything like the first one it's hopefully going to be amazing. This is a book about a girl called April and it is released in April who is pretending to be someone she's not but then not even that she's not but is pretending to be a different woman to who she is naturally which I think all girls do to an extent but when someone very much falls for that completely different personality I think this book is about what happens then. Next we have Queen of Coin and Whisper by Helen Corcoran which is released on the 6th of April. This book sounds like it's the romance of Priory with a young queen and her spy master and it's meant to be very lesbian and very wonderful and very whimsical and fantastical and I just keep seeing so many good things about it online and I just really really want to read it, it's as simple as that. I want to read it so much I have actually pre-ordered it, I very rarely pre-order books but on the 100 day of it being released kind of date, although I think it's changed now but I thought I'm going to buy this book because I'm going to enjoy it and I'm going to read it, so fingers crossed. The next book on my list is released on the 30th of April and that is Goldilocks by Laura Lamb. This is a story about an all-female Mars mission and it sounds great. I had vague plans at one point to write a similar story myself and whilst the plans haven't gone, I haven't done it and so to read it will be amazing or read a similar thing will be amazing. I'm just I'm all for a all-female butt-kicking mission to Mars. And the cover also seems quite reminiscent of The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers and I enjoyed that so fingers crossed for this one. On the 12th of May I have two anticipated releases. The first is Scapegraces by Hannah Abigail Clark and it's about lesbian witches at school. I think one lesbian witch has been kicked out or needs to find a new coven and she does at school and I saw it on Twitter as a new publisher were announcing their like first YA release so that's what caught my attention but then I read the blurb and thought wow I love the sound of this I'll be getting on that train. Also releasing that day is The Henna Wars by Adib I'm going to read this one just because I know I can't say the name, which is terrible, I should have looked it up, but I didn't, and so I'm just going to read it because otherwise I'll try and like, I'll misremember it, so I'm just going to read it. So also released that same day is The Henna Wars by Adiba Jokidar, and it's about two rival girls who run competing henna stalls at their school. And the cover was honestly the first thing that caught my attention. But when I read the synopsis and saw it, it said, because Muslim girls aren't lesbians, I thought, I think I need to read this. There's so much representation in here that I want to read about. And it just looks good. I'm going to, or have already said that about a lot of books, because obviously that is what this video is, books I'm excited about. So, soz. I've also realised that about half of these books have some LGBT plus representation which, you know, is good. There's not enough out there and I am pleased to see more of it and want to encourage more of it when it comes out. The next book I have on my list comes out on the 19th of May and that is The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes by Suzanne Collins. This is the prequel to the Hunger Games trilogy and it's set about 64 years before and I'm quite excited to read it. I'm rereading The Hunger Games as we speak and I'm loving them again. But they released an extract from it last week or the week before, introducing you to the hero. And the hero is President Snow and a lot of people were upset about the fact that they were calling him a hero. But I think they actually just meant to say protagonist, but I might be wrong. But I'm looking forward to reading it because I think it might be interesting to see how he became the character we know. I'm just not as happy about who they've given him to mentor. It just feels a bit repetitive, kind of. It's a bit of the wrong word, but it's kind of the right sentiment. I'm just, I am looking forward to reading it. I'm not looking forward to the price, so 
I might persuade my mum that she wants to read it and steal it from her first. The next book on my list comes out on the 2nd of June and it's also a lesbian queen fantasy story. Apparently I like those. And that is The Dark Tide by Lysia Janiska. Like I said, I'm pretty sure this has a lesbian queen again, but I also think it has more elements of magic and I think it's meant to be a folklore retelling so that would be good. I'd be interested to see if I could find out what folklore first and then be able to look that up myself but at the very least I'm looking forward to reading it in terms of mythic. On the 9th of June we get the Falling in Love montage by Kira Smith. This I believe is about two girls who fall in love over summer but agree to have nothing more so their romance will just be contained to summer and so they do all the stereotypical romantic things and then I assume they do accidentally fall in love and heartbreak happens and they don't communicate about how they both actually really like each other but they don't want to say because they're not meant to be in love with each other but I'm just guessing but that sounds good. I like that. I would have liked to read that during my romance month, but unfortunately it is not shut out. So I'm not going to say the next book on my list is my most anticipated release because there are a lot of books on this list that I'm really excited about. But the next book on the list is the one I know I'm going to really, really enjoy. It's the one I've been waiting for the most. And that's the Empire of Gold by S.A. Chakraborty which comes out on the 30th of June and I am most excited about this because it is the final book in the David Bad trilogy and I have loved those first two books and the first two books have broken my heart and they've been like so intense and S.A. Chakraborty said she cried when reading them so I don't have a lot of hope for me but I'm really really excited to read them the first two books have been amazing, they've been so rich in world building, the characters have been so good. It left it, I didn't feel as shocked and broken at the end of the second book as I did to the first, but that's just because the drama happened over longer, but it left it on a much bigger cliffhanger and I'm really interested to see how they pull themselves out of it. The final book on my list comes out on the 9th of July and that is Loveless by Alice Oseman. This is her normal novel about being asexual and whilst there's a lot of LGBT plus representation I also want to read more books about being demisexual or being asexual and so I'm really really excited to read about this representation. I haven't loved her novels as much as her graphic novels so I'll be interested to see what I think of this but yeah a lot of people are excited about it I am excited to read the representation I think I'm more excited to read the representation than I am to read the work if that makes sense but yeah we will see I'm looking forward to it so yes that is my list of anticipated releases for the first half of 2020 some of them may have come out by the time this video goes up and some of them or actually a lot of them are up on NetGalley so I might try and request them before because I'm impatient. But if they're books I really really enjoy I will probably buy the actual copy as well. If you enjoyed this video please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing if you're not already. Comment down below if you're looking forward to any of these books as well or if you've luckily read any of them and tell me about how amazing they are and I will see you in the next video. Bye!